Today I have come out with Conern in his Evo MR build and we have come here. CG 0400. It's a big tyre shop in Ramintra and in fact the owner, Kunjo in the black t-shirt is just standing behind me. But we have come not for tyres or wheels, although this is a place you come to for that sort of thing. We've come to look at a single-seater race car, a super formula car that has come over from Japan and is sitting in their garage for a week before it goes back. The story is Yokohama brought this car over for the endurance race at the end of December. We are now on the 10th of January. They brought it over as part of their booth, part of their display. Before it goes back, they've dropped it down here and it is right here. But what's interesting, this isn't the current model. Last year they did the same thing. They brought the SF19, which is the car that ran in the series because it's like a single chassis series and a single tire supplier, that kind of thing, single engine. Well, there's actually two engines, but a single chassis at least. Last year they brought the SF19, which ran from 2019 to 2022. This year to mix things up a little bit, they have brought the SF14, the car that went before from 2014 to 2018. So it's a car I've never seen before. It's been consigned to museums and things like that, but it's good to see this car. And again, it's like a mini Formula One car off the era. These are the closest you get to Formula One cars. So you can see the Formula One styling if you go back almost 10 years. So I'm just going to take you for a quick look around this and then a poke around CG0400 because these guys, you cut them open and they are Honda. We have got a load of Hondas sitting around here. So the next question, what is Super Formula? Well, it's a single seat of Formula and it's supposed to be the fastest outside of Formula One. This is as close to Formula One as you can get. It's faster than Formula 2 and kind of the European and Worldwide Series and it's a real breeding ground for drivers heading for Formula 1. And it's not just Japanese drivers, although it's like a series that only runs in Japan. Drivers like Eddie Irvine, drivers like Pedro de la Rosa, Pierre Gasly, these kind of people, they raced in Super Formula and made their name there. I did rehearse a little bit of information in my head on the SF14 that I scooped up off Google last night, but very handily, Yokohama have dropped an information board. So I'm just gonna quickly read you through that. So the SF14, what I said before, it started in 2014, it ran through to 2018, five seasons, built by Dallara, of course, who else? and 660 kilograms, including the driver. So that's a lot lighter than an F1 car, which is about 140 heavier. And it's got push rod suspension all round. The engine, it's the Toyota 2.0-litre inline four direct injection turbo engine that they use in the Super GT cars like the Supra, like the Lexus. And the engine weighs 85 kilos. It's got 550 horsepower, pretty much, and it runs on 13-inch Yokohama tires, like the Formula One style of that era. So I just want to mention Yokohama as well, because they're kind of using this as a development series, apart from the PR, the marketing, bringing this car over, setting up booths, that kind of thing. They're also using this for development, so they're developing in racing on the Sunday, on Monday it goes in the road car, that kind of scenario. So they came up with soft compounds in this series a few years ago, which really gave drivers the opportunity to be like a Formula One driver, learn to use different compounds. But what pushing forward they want to do is in 2025, they're going to make this tire 35% recycled materials. And that's a big step. And they say there'll be no drop off in performance. And that's a big claim to make. And in motor racing, the lap times tell everything. You cannot get away with the PR spin. So they have got a tire that's gonna be part recycled and it's gonna prove it on the racetrack. And that's gonna be pretty impressive. People are waiting to see that. 
and that is going to showcase going forward because tyres, like everything else, are part of this big environmental challenge we have now. So Yokohama are looking to do their bit and they're looking to do their bit on the racetrack and prove it to everyone. And also, while I'm here as well, we'll just show you this diagram because on the wet compounds already they use a number of recycled materials, as you can see here, a number of different recycled materials, compounds, that kind of thing. So they are using this series not just for the PR, but really to develop for the future. So enough super formula cars, let's look at what he's got here. Because to start off with, we've got six EKs. Now that is pretty cool, and you won't see six EKs very often in one place in Thailand. We've got four here and two down the other end. And amongst those six EKs, we've got a Mugen one here, and it got two spoons. It got one spoon here, and one spoon down there, the early and the late one as well. So we get a really nice mix. Then up here, we've got one that's dressed up with a racing livery on it. Here we've got one really, really nice in white, very clean. The roof spoiler looks great. We've got an R32 as well sitting in the mix. So we've got a lot of JDM going on here. And then perfectly balanced while well, we're talking about Yokohama, and we're talking about Super Formula. We've got an Advan liveried EG racer here as well that looks absolutely fantastic. Advan's colors, you really cannot get much better than that, to be honest, that black and red. It's absolutely iconic, just to be honest, like Spoon as well. So we've got some really cool stuff. Type R, I should say, as well. So we've got the real sporty racing edge going on in this place clearly come joe is a serious car guy and then while i'm here we've got a honda edix which i barely know to be honest in the west in europe they're called an frv here like in japan they're called an edix this is a little mpv kind of minivan thing and it's a three plus three through the dust here you can see three seats in the front, three seats in the back. So it's kind of like Japanese Fiat Multipla. And like the Multipla, it's very quirky. The styling's a little bit strange. And like the Multipla also, when it ran out, they didn't directly replace it as well. Although with the core of people who bought the car, it was really popular. And I think with the Fiat Multipla and the Honda Edix, is a case of you got people into the car and they were rusted on but unfortunately both cars they didn't get enough people into them to make it worthwhile building another generation so this is really really rare i believe there's only around about 10 or so in thailand at the most they're all directly imported from japan and you can see this one has got a mugen body kit on it and upgraded wheels so that's something really rare so now i'm just going to take you down to the other end of the garage and while we're here we'll just take a look at the other two civics down here the other two eks so we've got a type r here and we've got a spoon version here as well and again you can see the spoon details like the carbon fiber bonnet you can see the brake calipers the wheels the spoon details are set it apart and this Type R as well looks really, really nice in white. And I would often say that with white cars, they're getting too many in Thailand. And sometimes you get a bit bored of seeing white cars. But I think for the EK, it looks absolutely stunning in those white colors. And when I say there's too many white colors here, a KN in white just goes straight past me. So anyway, these I think look pretty nice in white and a Type R, you cannot beat that. So that's CG0400. Quick visit round here. We see a Super Formula car. We see a stack load of Hondas and an R32. That's not bad at all.